Welcome to a chilling journey through the true home alone. Horror story animated. A tale where solitude turns sinister and the familiar walls of home echo with unforeseen dread. In this animation, brace yourself to witness a harrowing series of events that unfold when one finds themselves utterly alone. What lurks in the shadows when you're the only one home? Stay tuned as we unveil a story that intertwines isolation, fear, and the unexpected, all wrapped in the deceptive safety of a place called home. Hello, my name is Arjun, and what I'm about to share with you is a true event that has haunted me since it unfolded a few months ago. Fresh out of college, I found myself in the throes of job hunting, an endeavor that kept me tethered to my parents' home in one of the bustling metropolises of South India. It was during this period of transition and anticipation that my story took a sinister turn. On the day in question, my parents were away to visit a friend, leaving me in charge of our two-storied house a structure I knew like the back of my hand, yet one that I was about to see in a new, eerie light. The evening prior had set the stage for my unease, as I indulged in what was arguably one of the most terrifying horror films I had ever seen. Little did I know, the horror wasn't confined to the screen. With the house to myself, I proceeded with my daily routine which on that day included a shower. As is my habit, I prepared for my bath with a backdrop of loud music, a personal quirk to keep the solitude at bay. However, this time, constrained by my phone's low battery, I resorted to playing music through YouTube on my TV. Ensuring everything was in place, I flipped on the bathroom's external light switch and stepped into the shower warm water, a temporary respite from my lingering unease. Moments into my shower, as I lost myself in the music and the monotony of the routine, a sudden plunge into darkness jarred me back to reality. The bathroom light had gone off. My first thought was a power outage, a common enough occurrence. But then the persistent melodies from the TV downstairs contradicted this notion. A cold knot of fear formed in my stomach as I grappled with the implications. If not a power cut, then what? The bulb was new, which left only one chilling possibility. Someone had deliberately turned it off. As I stood there, water now turning from comforting to chilling, Every horror story I had ever heard played in my mind. The isolation of the house. The eerie timing post, a horror movie night. And now, an unexplained darkness all converged into a singular, terrifying thought. I might not be alone. Began to thump from the room above. My heart raced as I stood frozen at the bottom of the stairs, each thud echoing like a drumbeat of impending doom. Clad only in my towel, my first instinct was to run. But where? This was my home, a place that should have signified safety. Yet there I was, feeling more vulnerable than ever. With a deep breath, I reminded myself that I needed to face whatever was causing this disturbance. Maybe it was just my imagination. Fueled by the horror movie and the sudden loneliness of the house, clinging to this shred of rationality, I cautiously made my way back upstairs, my eyes darting to every shadow, every corner. As I approached the top, the heavy footsteps ceased as abruptly as they had begun. The silence was almost more terrifying, a thick, expectant pause. I reached the living area where the TV was still silent, 
the screen a blank canvas of my fears. The music had stopped, but why? I glanced around, trying to detect any sign of intrusion or movement. My eyes landed on the remote, innocuously placed on the coffee table. But something felt off. It wasn't where I left it. Determined to not let my fear overpower me, I started a methodical search of every room, every possible hiding spot, my mind simultaneously racing through every possible scenario. As I moved, I tried to make as little noise as possible, my ears straining for any sound out of place, but all I encountered was the oppressive silence, a mocking reminder of my solitude. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I found myself back in my room, the epicenter of the strange occurrences. The light was on, just as I had left it after the inexplicable blackout. I stepped inside, my eyes scanning every inch of the space for anything amiss, and that's when I noticed it. The window, which I always kept locked, was ajar. A shiver ran down my spine as the implications set in. Had someone been here? Was the intruder still nearby? My mind raced with possibilities, but I knew I couldn't just stand there in fear. With the last ounce of courage, I secured the window, double-checked the locks on every door, and grabbed the largest kitchen knife for protection. The house was silent once more, but the echoes of what had transpired lingered in the air, a haunting melody of fear and disbelief. As I sat there, waiting for my parents' return, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, the weight of unseen eyes upon me. This was no longer just my home. It was a scene straight out of a horror story, one where the line between reality and nightmare had blurred irrevocably. The unnerving crescendo of footsteps descending the stairs was the final straw. My instincts screamed at me to flee, and I obeyed without a second thought. Clad only in my towel, I dashed outside, abandoning the supposed safety of my home for the uncertain refuge of the street. There I stood, shivering not just from the dampness of my attire, but from the overwhelming surge of fear and confusion. My phone, my only link to the outside world, left behind in the chaos. I waited near the gate of my house, every minute stretching into an eternity, every sound a potential harbinger of further terror. When my parents finally returned, Nearly an hour later, relief washed over me, yet it was tinged with frustration. As I recounted the harrowing events, their disbelief was palpable. To them, it was nothing more than a fanciful prank, a figment of an overactive imagination. Reluctantly, I followed them back into the house. Every sense heightened, every shadow a potential threat, Despite my parents' skepticism, I couldn't shake off the terror of the experience. The house seemed quiet, deceptively normal, as if mocking my panic. Then came the moment that chilled me to the bone. My mother's casual reprimand for leaving the back door open struck me like a thunderbolt. I was utterly certain I had checked and locked it during my frenzied search. The realization that someone or something, had indeed been in the house with me, and had the opportunity to harm me, was paralyzing. The incident left an indelible mark on me, the question of what might have happened if I had confronted the source of those footsteps haunted me 